As we approach the rumored release date for Nikon Next Camera, there's been some other rumors about. No Z6 or Z7 III, a possible cinema camera from Nikon, 8K60 on the Z8. Here's my thoughts on what these could possibly mean for us in the future. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's Wayne. I have some ideas about what's gonna happen next for Nikon and that I wanna share with you guys. This morning as I was messing around with my FX30 and thinking about, you know, what camera I wanna give up, depending on what Nikon comes out with. Would it be this one or the A7R5? Something hit me and I figured I need to make a video about it because you guys would probably be interested in it as well. So let me put this aside and we start by first addressing those lenses that came out from Sigma. Three APS-C lens for the Z mount. Hmm. Three APS-C lens, all primes, 1.4. Hmm. That says something. And my friend over here is like peeking her head in to say, I think I know what it is. Let me give you a little history lesson. Prior to this camera coming out, Sony released three APS-C lens for it. Okay, well, I shouldn't say for it because we don't know if it's for it, but people speculated, hmm, all these other cameras that they had, Sony's putting out some pretty decent APS-C lens. That's cool. And a few months later, what do we get? FX30. No one expected it, no one knew it was coming, but it came out. So I'm off the thought process. Granted, these Sigma lenses are not Nikon lens, but could there be a possibility, as Nikon is not focusing on video camera, that we will see some sort of cinema camera based upon an APC format, just like my friend here, on the Nikon side? So that got me thinking, what would a possible Nikon cinema camera look like? Will they make something like this one? Let's explore that for a moment. The FX30 4K capable camera has a 6K sensor inside of it, 26 megapixel. Now I know you photo guys are saying, yeah, I need to just sign off right now, but hang out for a second. You guys have been saying that you don't want a fan, you don't want video in your camera. As a photo guy, who's now gone video, I started to think, hmm, after getting this camera and seeing what it was like, why couldn't we have a camera from Nikon based on the Z6 II? Now my thoughts on this are, if we take the body of the Z6 II, make it slightly thicker, just like we're seeing here, okay? Add a fan to it as well. Get rid of the EVF. We could have ourselves a cinema camera. Now, while this has only a flip out screen and it's three inch, the size of the body of the Z6 II allows for a 3.2 inch screen or larger. So we would have that camera, right? The Z6 II is actually taller than this camera and a little bit wider. We know the mount is definitely bigger. So you put something in this kind of body with a fan inside of it, you have a pretty good 4K video camera with unlimited recording capability because of the fan. Could they stick raw in it? Possibly, would they? Hmm, maybe. Since we have Panasonic and Fuji's thrown some raw on some of their cameras and they're releasing, what, two cameras? X-H2, X-H2S, um, Lumix S5 II, 25X. You know, why couldn't Nikon do something similar? So then that also got me thinking, wait a second. So if they decide to skip the Z6 and Z7 II and push that back later on in the middle of the year, could we see some firmware updates? Okay, let's think about that for a second. Canon plans to release a massive firmware update for the R5. And from what we've been hearing, this should take it like to the next level. There's gonna be a whole bunch of stuff coming in. Get rid of the 30 minute recording limit, add some additional features, 
um, what is it called? I forget the feature, but it's basically allow it to do like a hundred and something megapixel photo. Pixel shift. Hmm. So we have our Z6 II and Z7 II, which we haven't seen a firmware update, update on in quite some time. Could Nikon be planning a massive firmware update on this camera to basically extend your life, to give it a bit more time until the actual cameras get released? It's a possibility. I think, you know, as manufacturers are looking at delays on their future cameras, they have to figure out a way that they can basically keep current owners happy. And one of the ways to do that is to add more features with a firmware update. So why couldn't Nikon do the same thing? And I think that's possibly why we haven't heard anything about it. They've been doing little bits for everybody else, but the Z6 and Z2 is so like, mm, sorry, 7.2, nothing. So maybe there's a big firmware update in the works, which could possibly drop right around the same time or maybe a little bit later, because you know, if you have your camera, Z6, Z7, and you can get better autofocus, they can figure out a way to tweak the stability to make it better. They can have things like, um, focus breathing compensation, you know, crop that lens in, make the electronic stabilization better. Hey, you have a camera now that is almost up to snuff with everybody else. It probably won't be that perfect, but it'll probably give you more of life. In your mind, you're like, this thing is great. It's a whole new camera now. There's so many things that have been added to it that makes it perform better. Maybe close to the Z9 in autofocus. I think those guys are looking for videos. Yeah, maybe they'll figure out a way to drop in 10 bit or something, you know? I, I can't really say, but I think it's if they do something like that, we would basically hang out for the next iteration. I know people like, no, nah, no, nah, I wanted things, I'm gonna go someplace else. But if they did that, would you stay? Let me know in the comments, I'm curious. Because if I had a Z6 II and they came up with something like that, it could, you know, satisfy me a little bit longer, I would have stayed. If I had it up till today and, and it's like waiting and it's like, oh, here comes a Z8 plus firmware update for your camera. Really, who wouldn't want that? I would be on board. All right, so the other thing I want to touch on, Z8, 8K60. You know I've been going through the patents and looking at a whole bunch of stuff trying to figure out what's coming next. One of the things that I saw and I'm like, damn, how did I miss this? I think I did post it in one of the other ones as well with the patent video I'm talking about. There was something where they referenced like a sort of external recording capability and a little bit more on it. I'm going out of my head right now from what I remember, but it's, they did reference Sony's C200 camera. And we know that camera, when I read that page, and I'll post it here so you can see it, it basically references uh, option to read media or view the media. And that had a CFast um, card built into it, which is different than the SD cards. I'm like, hang on a second. So we have another media that's kind of like for video. Nikon cameras already knew CF Express. I didn't expect that would go to CFast, but it also references being able to output raw to an external recording device. Now, one of the things that we know is as you go with the higher codecs, you're expecting the camera to get a little bit warmer. The Z9 with its body, it can go up to two hours recording 8K30. So if they put 8K60 inside that Z8, you probably couldn't record with it for a long period of time before it would start to overheat. So your options are add a fan, make it thicker. For the guys are gonna say, hell no, no fan, get rid of the video stuff. But guys, video's here to stay, it's gonna have video. They already put it out in the room that's gonna have 8K60. So we know that the Z9 can do NRAW, ProRes RAW, internal, basically all the stuff, all the RAW stuff can be done internal on that camera. The Z8, I think, would have the option to do 8K60 up to a certain level internally. If they're gonna do RAW, that's gonna to have to be external, right? You get an external recorder, you can do that. Now, not many people shoot in 8K, but people do use 8K. I've tested it with this A7R5 and it looks awesome. As far as space, it's huge. I need to upgrade my hard drive, my computer, if I'm gonna keep shooting 8K all the time or get some kind of external drive that's gonna handle all that. How many of you guys would prefer if they give you 8K60 externally? 
or would you want to have a fan on the back of the Z8? Let me pull out this trusted camera right here. And in my mind, think about it for a second. If you look at what the R5C is, that fan is bulky, but the camera is also short, narrow. They kept it on the small side. The Z8 should be around the D850 size. So it's gonna be a little bit taller. And in my mind, put in a slimmer fan. If you look at the body of this thing, okay? You can see that it's thicker, slightly thicker on the, on, the, on the back here. If you look at the top and you see what a fan is, okay? The screen itself is, is just in this little alcove, which basically mounts the fan. And you can see the intake on the bottom there. If they make a fan on the back of the Z8, that thin or somewhere close in that region, or even the Z6 III whenever it comes out, or whatever cinema camera they give us, it was kind of in this sort of body. That would work. Because the camera doesn't have to have this gigantic unit on the back of it to cool it, which basically throws off the balance of the camera. So it can remain a great hybrid camera, still do great videos like the Z9, but at the same time, not overheat. I think a lot of people would jump on that. The photo guys may go, yeah, 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 but then if the size is not that crazy, you can still grip this thing. Let me show it here. You can still grip this thing. It's not that tough. I mean, it's like, what, 3.18 inch thick? The Z62 is about 2.9 inches. I wouldn't mind if they make it a little bit thicker and they drop a fan in the back of it. Make the screen bigger while you're at it. Still quite about that. Not, not going to let it go. I want a bigger screen. However, that would work. Taller, wider, thinner fan. Don't need a gigantic unit in the back of it. So that's my thoughts on what I think we could possibly see. I don't know for sure. I have no insider information. I don't have a Z8, but based upon what's been going on, there's a possibility, right? This planner software that they're talking about, well, now it's been said that it's supposed to be some kind of software to manage like an 8K proxy. That in my mind kind of lines up with, hmm, is Nikon gonna, when they do this external thing, somehow allow it to record proxy files? Is it gonna be NRAW files? Will they make their own recorder? I mean, they have NRAW, like Magic has B-RAW and have their own recorder. Atomos is using ProRes RAW and whatever camera RAW that, you know, it records into the ProRes, I mean, into the Ninja. So, Will we get a Nikon recorder? <laughs> My mind is all over the place here now. From the patent information and seeing that, and now some updated information about this planner software thing, why not? Why couldn't Nikon make their own version of a recorder? Why couldn't they do it? I mean, it's, it sounds crazy, right? But what if they're taking the next level step and it's like, look, we're giving you a cinema camera, we're giving you a photo camera that can do video at the same time, and we're giving you your own dime recorder to record our proprietary and raw software. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next one.